Today on page 121, we're going to talk about Mega Traveler. You're saying, wait a minute, you already did a video on Mega Traveler. Yes, I did. I showed the box contents. Today, I'm going to talk about something specifically found in the box, and that is this book, the Imperial Encyclopedia. Why did I start with this book instead of the referee manual or the player's manual? Because I felt like it. This one gives a nice overview of what the Imperium is. It's a, a library data book. And it, it tells you an awful lot about what you're going to be gaming in, the environment you're going to be gaming in. So I thought I'd start with this one, just change things up a little bit. I will take a look at the referee and the player's guide down the line in a future video. But for today, we're going to take a look at the Imperial Encyclopedia on page 121. Mega Traveler. I will admit, I always have a soft spot in my heart for Mega Traveler. It's just a game that I... Read a lot when I was uh, running one of my oldest uh, Traveler campaigns. I ran a little bit during the Shattered Imperium era, during the Rebellion era. I bailed on it rather quickly, but I used so much information out of these books in my Classic Traveler campaign, then later my D20 uh, Traveler campaign, uh, up to and including the Traveler campaign I'll be kicking off once we can all get together again. So for this guy, it's the Imperial Encyclopedia, Really what it was, was the library data. This gave a nice inside look at all the different factions. This isn't even all the factions, but a lot of the different factions in the War of the Imperium. I'm sorry, these are just the, the general wars that the Imperium has fought. This is not the Rebellion. So, again, this was published uh, at the same time that uh, Digest Games was out. And uh, they had a lot of input into this stuff. A lot of the Mega Traveler design came from Digest Games. Uh, Joe Fugati is involved in this one. This one is written by uh, Gary L. Thomas and Joe D. Fugati Sr. So uh, the editing and the art are all brought out there. Art director was Bar Barbie Pratt. The cover painting was by Steve Venters. I always liked the cover on this one. I just thought it very thought-provoking. So what you get in here is the Wars of the Imperium. Here is the battlefields of the, of the Rebellion. So here's a look at where everybody is uh, at the beginning of the Rebellion after Dalinar has uh, shot Strephon on 132, 11, 16 and begun the Rebellion. And this goes into a lot of the detail. Here's a chronology of the Imperium. All the way, this goes to negative 1,000. And this takes us up to 1117, which is when this, this product would have been from. And then the Emperor's List, you get all the uh, Emperors before the Civil War. You get a nice thumbnail on each and every one of them. The various Emperors of the Flag. I found this very entertaining to read. This extrapolated some stuff from Original Traveler and uh, built on it a little bit. And I just felt it fleshed out a little bit better. And then we come to the successors to Strephon, all the people who think they have a claim to the throne, and we come down to the nobles. What? Who are the nobles? Why are these people thinking they can have the Iridium throne? And we go into some detail there. Just a very useful book if you're starting the rebellion, and I dog-eared this when I started my rebellion campaign. My rebellion campaign went maybe a year uh, my players start, I think, started to feel that they were small fish in a very big pond. And I really felt that they were being swept up in events they really had no control over and that they were feeling kind of, uh, lost in their own game. And that's one of the reasons why I went ahead and I stopped that campaign. Uh, we had a couple of key people move out of that campaign. They moved away. So it was a good natural time to go ahead and just call it. It was... An interesting campaign, but I prefer the classic era where it's more subterfuge and espionage. Uh, maybe you're uh, part of a military group uh, running a ship. I've done campaigns like that. Those can be a lot of fun. You need good role players for that, though. You can't have anybody getting their uh, head swelled because they're the captain. That can lead to a lot of problems in a campaign and destroy the campaign. Fortunately, I have really good role players at my table, and I haven't had an issue with that. So going through the library data, it's just more 
uh, library data, but a lot of it is focused on the assassination, the right of succession through assassination, uh, barracks emperors. There's a lot more emphasis on things particular to the rebellion. So the library data, very nice. I love the artwork in, in the Mega Traveler era. Uh, continued on in the great vein and some of the exact same pictures that were used in the original Traveler campaign. And I have no issue with that. That's seen like before. Uh, it just gives it a nice flavor. So we're going through here. We're through library data S. Coming through to up, we're, we're up to Vargir. This is also very good if you're not familiar with the alien races. This was a good thumbnail for all the alien races alphabetically. Uh, when I was still new to Traveler, I found these kind of things very helpful. Even though I was more experienced Traveler GM when this came out in 87, I still found uh, it very nice to have the current take on some of the races. I had the old alien books and things by then, but these are still nice. I still like reading through this stuff. This book will come out uh, when I'm starting up Traveler. In fact, this book, the reason I thought of doing this video is I brought this book out to look over it. I'm hoping to begin my new Traveler campaign. I'm thinking it's going to be under Mon Mongoose 2E rules. I've never run Mongoose 2E. I've only ever read the rules. I've never run or played. Uh, I'm pretty excited to start up a Mongoose 2nd Edition. I'm already seeing I'm going to be altering some rules. I've also been reading the Cepheus Deluxe rules, and I see that there's some benefits to maybe taking a look at Cepheus Deluxe. Not that it's better than Mongoose, it's just a little simpler. But I think for right now, this campaign is going to start up with Mongoose, and if I have some success with it and I can squeeze it in, uh, you know, I'll keep it going for a little while, and then I may, when this campaign's run for a bit, I may also uh, go to Cepheus for a little while and just show my players what that system has. Cepheus has a lot to bring to the table. Okay, coming out of the library data, we're over to the referees' library data. This is interesting. I'm Again, if you've been with my channel for a while, you know I'm not a big one on segregating information for players and uh, DMs or GMs. Uh, the idea that the Dungeon Master Guide in AD&D can only be read by the Dungeon Master, I've always found kind of absurd. Uh, I feel that way about this stuff. If uh, I'm a player and I've bought this book, I'm going to read this stuff. And I have no problem with my players doing that, uh, as long as they don't take knowledge that their characters wouldn't have and use it on the table, which, again, if you have good role players, isn't an issue. Uh, I've never had a problem with uh, players reading referees' information. As I said, I've never been a fan of the referees' info. This is only about four pages. And then we come to equipment. And this is where this book kind of... Helps you out. Now, this is one of the three books in uh, the Mega Traveler box set. So, of course, you need equipment. And this is the section that gives you all the Mega Traveler equipment. One of the other reasons I, I love Mega Traveler, and I'm always going to have a soft space in my heart for it, is that when I was buying Challenge Magazine, they were just transitioning from, well, they about a year, not a little longer than that, but in any case, they, they, they were a good place for the transition between Mega Traveler and Traveler, the original Traveler. So I got used to seeing things set up in Mega Traveler, and this just kind of got to be my, my little comfort zone. Uh, nice equipment in here, densitometers. Uh, you have a magnetic compass, crampons for you know spike climbing equipment, uh, gauge depth for registering the pressure of water, just some good stuff. I'm a, a geek for this kind of stuff. I enjoy reading up a good equipment list, and this is a very good one. This book is very well written, very well put together. Uh, it makes sense how they have it laid out. You know, we finish the equipment, now we go on to drugs. Drugs and Traveler have always been interesting to me. Uh, fast drug, slow drug, combat drug. I've found games that I've run entirely based on that. And of course, the evil mega corps that are, you know, getting the pharmacology from a planet at all costs. Uh, looking at you, Avatar, uh, I don't know. Drugs, they have a place in Traveler. I just not a huge one for me. And then we go to vac suits, and now we come to combat equipment. This is, of course, where a lot of us go to first. Let's read about what kind of weapons we have. And there's some nice ones called out here. I would have liked a little bit more artwork in this section, uh, just to kind of call out how the weapons looked. 
Traveler has a lot of artwork that shows weapons, but I would have liked to have seen it in this section. Here's the weapon prices. And now we come to starships, spacecraft, and vehicles. As I found out with my fighting ships of the, travel of the uh, Shattered Imperium video, wow, there are a lot of harsh opinions on Mega Traveler's uh, spacecraft design. I'm not going to engage that. I've stated earlier, I am not a spacecraft design guy. I certainly will use the rules, but I'm not going to sweat uh, some of the details. There are a lot of people that do. I'm not belittling that. That's up to them. But I was really surprised at some of the uh, acrimony that that particular book brought out. And I imagine I'm going to see a little bit of it here. I hope not too much. Uh, this for me is was cool to see the, how the vehicles looked, to read their stats. I didn't know really what a pinnace was. I didn't have a real good idea. Of course, it's just a, a ship's craft for between the planet and the uh, the ship itself. So shuttle would be another good word. But pinnace, of course, is a military word. And it was kind of neat to, to see it. Pinnace can also be armed and go into fighting, things like that, where a ship's boat is strictly for transit. So now we go to more ships. The Seeker. I love the Seeker. One of my favorites also. The Free Trader and the Far Trader. I love these guys. I like that they brought the shuttle, or the, sorry, the fighter into Mega Traveler. They, it holds a bigger place. There is one in Traveler, but the Mercenary Cruiser. Uh-oh. Star Wars Attack of the Clones. I think you owe someone an apology. Uh, let's take a look. Some more ships. These are all the classic ships that I really love. A lot of these ships are featured in the, uh, the FASA Starship deck plans I've done videos on. You get to get a real good look at the deck plans for these. Deck plans were not a real common thing for Mega Traveler. Did not see much by way of deck plans. I think the assumption was we already had deck plans. Kind of wish they'd dived into that a little deeper. Starship operating. The expense of uh, you know, economics of running a starship. Here's a nice Starship Encounters chart. This is expanded on in the Starship Operator's Manual. I've done a video on that some time ago from DGP. Uh, I like that. I like that these rules mesh with those rules. Starship Operating Procedures 1 and 2. So how do you run a starship? Well, this will teach you how. And then we go to the Spinward Marches, Planetary Data. And you get the nice Spinward Marches map inside this. And that continues on inside the cover. So this is a 96-page book, and it uses the inside cover on the last page and on the first page. So, very nice product. And considering it was part of a box set that in 1987 cost $30, you got the three uh, core books, this, the referee, and the game, uh, the referee and the player's guide. And you got the nice map, too, with a nice box set for $30. It was certainly worth it. This is available on DriveThruRPG. This one is $10. Each of the core books is $10. Or you could get it on Far Future Enterprises through Mark Miller's uh, webpage. I did a video on that a while ago. And they, uh, it's available on Thumb Drive or CD-ROM for $35. And that gets you just about the entire Mega Traveler set. So, as an actual value, that's a little bit better than drive through RPG. RPG, however, is better if you're only interested in a few of the books. So, that's all I've got to say about the Imperial Encyclopedia. In future videos, I will take a look at the other two books that were in the Mega Traveler box set. Um, I love the Mega Traveler era, if not necessarily the Rebellion. I like the information I was able to get from Mega Traveler and expand it into my classic era Traveler game. And I, as I said, the reason I thought to do this video is I pulled this out to do some research for a Traveler game. And I thought, oh, I should do one on the contents. So there you have it. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And I'll see you next time on page 121.